y'all better get on the radio. Y'all know this is my thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's my thing. <laughs> so, um, a quick uh, full disclosure, um, just to let you know, um, Adrian and I do work together, so if she does... <coughs> So it just happened to go in by, by first name, by government name I, or whatever. It's all good. Yeah. It's all fam. You know that. Because you know I was getting ready to say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, give the people a little bit of background. What what got you into uh, community organization and uh, activism? Okay, so um, I was originally born and raised in South Central um, Los Angeles. And then we moved here. Uh, my mother moved here because we have a lot of family here in Texas. So mm-hmm. my mother moved to a town called Seguin. Yeah. And um, my um, family down there was very prominent um, and about giving back to the African American community like years ago. Yeah. And um, so I don't know my family. It's just it's always been a thing for us to be able to give back, you know, pay it forward. And um, that's just something that um, that I love to do. So even though I'm originally from California, I grew up, you know, here in Texas as well. And um, San Antonio, um, as the crime rate started growing, you know, we um, just needed to find something to do to uh, kind of help the problems that was going on, you know, on the east side and things like that, you know, people being affected by it. So um, I used to sit on panels and do uh, panels about gun control and things like that. And then um, September 17th um, of 2017, my son was shot. You know, and um, he took he took some hits to the back, and it paralyzed him. He was coming home from college, and um, he was caught up in a drive-by shooting, and he took three bullets to the back, and it paralyzed him from the waist down. So I figured it was it was time for me to even more get out here, and fight and fight for the community and fight to try to save um, the children in the community. So, yeah. I mean, like I said, um, the few years that I've known you, you've always been <laughs> yeah. in the community in, yeah. in some aspect. Yeah. Well, so, um, how did you get involved with uh, EPPC? So, um, before I was with EPPC, um, I work at um, the Barbara Jordan Center that I worked for Organization San Antonio Fighting Back, so I did recovery and reentry. And um, then the opportunity um, came for me to, to do drug-free communities. And at first, I was like really, really against it because I did not want to work with children. But then I realized that um, the only way to kind of make some changes and make differences was to start, you know, working with the children and then hopefully we'll begin with the parents and then, you know, try to build safer and stronger communities. So um, that's how I basically got started. I, for years, I was like, nope, nope, don't want to do kids, nope. But I needed a change anyway because I kept seeing repetitive things and recovery and reentry, and it was like, maybe we need to start from the beginning and the beginning is the children. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the issues that you see then Hell, I see too even now. Right. Uh, going through um, the people deal with with recovery, reentry. Mm-hmm. Speak on that a little bit, just so just people kind of have an idea of what we're dealing with. So, um, <laughs> so there are three different programs that San Antonio Fighting Back has. We have Project um, Project Hope, which deals with HIV and AIDS, LGBTQ community things like that. They do HIV testing, and it's free, free HIV testing. Um, then we have recovery and reentry, recast program. And basically, recovery and reentry is what we do is try to be the, the resource for those that are coming home that have been formerly incarcerated um, or even been just in jail, um, not just so much TDC, but the county jail as well, probationers. And what we try to do is help them get a second chance at life, whether it be job training, um, skills, housing, things like that. So. Let me just put it out there because I think people get it misconstrued sometimes when you say getting resources. So we do what we can to get you to where you're trying to go, but it's really up to you to decide what you want to do. I tell people all the time because, you know, when you, when they come into the office, they feel like you don't understand their pain and what they're going through as if um, you don't know what it's like to have a background. I always have to tell people I'm a three-time convicted felon. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's all about um, it's all about what what you put out there and what you really want to do for yourself. I have battles that I still have to fight, but at the same time, I'm just not the type of person that's going to let somebody tell me no. I'm going to do what I set forth to do. Right. So um, I always try to encourage people. Like, it's it's a hard battle, and it's it's you're going to have to fight if you really want to make that change in life. But you chose to walk your walk this walk, and so you are the only person that has to get it right. And a lot of people don't understand that. Our recidivism rate is, is low. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it just depends on what who you're working with and what you're working with. But I think a lot of people come in and thinking that we're um, like these problem solvers, and right. we're not. No. No, nowhere near. <laughs> nowhere near it. So, um, so we, you know, we try to do our best to encourage and uh, help and rebuild families to become self-sustainable and even encourage the families to help deal with them, deal with 
the formerly incarcerated, you know, somebody's been gone five, ten years. That's a long time to them to have to try to reintegrate, reintegrate back into society. Yeah. And um, they face a lot of battles. You know, it's already hard nowadays to get a job. It's hard for a college student to get a job. So you can imagine what a, you know, what a convicted felon, what they go through. And so, you know, my job is to try to make them easy, make it easier for them. And like I tell them, I have a no judgment zone. So, you know, I don't, I don't judge. If you know, you come in here, I treat, I treat everybody the same. Right. And, so, so. and um, the work that you do with the EPPC. So with East Point Promise Prevention Coalition, um, let me give you a little history about that. When Barack Obama was president, um, we, yes, we do. <laughs> um, so he had awarded five cities um, money to help revitalize their communities. San Antonio, Texas was one of the ones, and that's how East Point Promise became. And so then you had East Point Promise Prevention Coalition, which dealt with drug-free community. The grant comes from SAMHSA, so it kind of all just entwined together. So basically what we go out and do is we try to help educate and let the kids know about what, not so much about, like we can't tell them to stop smoking weed, but we can encourage them not to smoke weed. Or, you know, these are the effects that can happen to you if you decide to, to smoke weed. And to just be careful about the drugs that they're putting into their body. A lot of things nowadays are laced with a lot of stuff. We have kids that are going into the hospital taking certain pills and coming out, you know, definitely mentally challenged because Jesus. of whatever was in the pill. CDC, um, we had a we had a student who took some pills that thought they were Xanax and it um he had a breakdown, a mental breakdown. I had to take him to the Knicks. Oh, wow. And so when they was running tests, it was so bad that the, the hospital couldn't figure out what was in the pill, so they had to send it off to the t to CDC. Well, the CDC sent back the results, and all they knew it was something that came from Asia. Wow. So they in the form of Xanax. Wow. So, you know, we try to encourage the children that um, it's important not to take drugs, but if you are doing drugs, recreational drugs, whatever it is, you know, these are some of the things that can happen to you. And so you just we just want them to make better decisions, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. That's what it is. It's what, it is. <laughs> it's what um, it is. No matter what you do, be knowledgeable in what you're doing before you do it. Exactly, and um, you know, in our communities, drug is um, one of the things that that really plague us. With the the main thing that plague us, and so we want to stop those generational curses. We want um, children to understand that you know it is other ways out of their environments. Um, we also want to be there for the parents as well, you know, if they want the help. Dealing, dealing with community, dealing with kids, dealing with those type of environments is very, already, it's hard. Yeah. And, um, you know, we take that home every night with us. So we do the best we can, you know. I don't, I don't see, my job is not to go in and I see glorious things every day. Like, I literally see kids without shoes, you know, so we do what we can do to get them some shoes for the day. So, um, you know, I try to encourage people to pay it forward to the communities, get involved more with the communities, because it's a lot of work out here that needs to be done. So true. And that's why we, that's why we, you know, this will be our second year with the summer program. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that coming up. So stay tuned, y'all. Very important information that y'all need to know. But let's go ahead and get into uh, some music from Bamboo. This is Just Us. Yes. <laughs> Do not go yes. anywhere, y'all. More music right here. This is the Urban Sweet KSYM 90.1 FM. <laughs> 